In this video, we will talk about the fair use and how to resolve copyright issues if they arise. You can use other people's content to create your videos, but it has to be done in a certain way. I will put the link to the YouTube fair use policy page so you can review it as well. But let's break it down and see what it means. So you can't just take a video from someone else and post it on your channel and that's it. That will get you a copyright strike. And at three strikes on your channel, YouTube will take the channel down. Not to mention, you won't get it monetized. To avoid this, you can use small portions from other people's videos, like five to 10 second clips. Write your script and add your voiceover and that's it. The video is transformed and that goes under fair use. YouTube also gives a few examples here, and I will show more of them during the course, so you can get a better view of how the videos will look like. Again, make sure to follow this policy, as even if you get monetized and you get a copyright strike, all those funds can go to the creator and not you. Another option would be to buy stock videos or images to use in your video, and I will share some websites from where you can get that later on. In the description, you will find a YouTube video link where you can learn how to deal with copyright issues. In the next video, we will see how to find a niche that actually works. Finding a niche that actually works will take some time, but eventually, these are the ways to do it properly. One thing to remember is that you have to niche down as much as possible in order to find an audience for your videos. So, for example, if you like sports, you won't start making videos about sports in general. You would want to do something like top 10 greatest football players of all time or best goals scored in 2023. If you want to do videos about gaming, pick a game and talk about that. I did the mistake on a gaming channel where I was playing a game and then started playing another game. People subscribe to you for the topic you offer them. If your next video is about something different than what they subscribed for, you are likely to lose the subscribers. And also, YouTube might not recommend your videos as it should. At the beginning, you have to niche down as much as possible. And once you start to grow, you can expand your niche because you will have more subscribers which will watch your content and that will help boost your video ranking. Another thing to consider is that different niches can get you different income based on niche and country. So, for example, the finance niche will bring more revenue than the gaming niche. Also, the same niche with US viewers will bring you more revenue than the same niche with viewers from India. You can do your own research on Google and see which niches earn a higher CPM. CPM, cost per mile, is a metric for how much YouTube's partner program pays creators for 1,000 ad views. CPM shows how interested advertisers are in investing in content in a certain niche and accessing YouTubers' audiences. The stronger this interest, the easier it is to monetize your channel, both through ads and avenues such as brand collaborations. One, you can pick something that you are already good at. For example, you are great at cooking and you can do cooking videos. Two, you can pick something that you are interested in already. Take a look at your YouTube history and see what are the videos you are most interested in. Write them down, and maybe there's a niche that you can do videos about. The first place to start is a free tool offered by Google, and it's called Google Trends. Let's start with a few examples. I'd like to do videos about gaming, cooking, movies, and let's see which are the trends. To find accurate results, be as specific as possible. And well, gaming is not very specific, right? Because there are thousands of games, and I can't make videos for all of them. I created a gaming channel, and I did this mistake, where I was playing a lot of games instead of being more specific. After I discovered this issue, I started playing only Spider-Man, which was just launched back then. I will enter here Spider-Man Remastered. Next, I like to cook vegan food, and I'm not going to enter just cooking as this term is too broad, so I will enter cooking vegan food. As for the movies, I enjoy watching the Marvel series. 
Now, depending where you are from, or where your channel will focus on getting subscribers, let's choose here, for example, United States. Choose the time frame as you wish, and I will choose YouTube search because that's what I'm interested in getting results from. As you can see, Marvel is searched the most. Now, let's see another method. We will go to YouTube and search for our keywords. Let's enter Marvel, and from filters, we will choose the upload date to this month or this year. And also choose the view count to see exactly how many views does this search term get. There will obviously be videos with a lot of views from old channels that are doing this regularly, so we can see this search term gets a lot of views. Let's do the other search term for Spider-Man, and we can see it's getting a lot of views, but it's half of what Marvel's search term is getting. You have to consider the number of videos that are out there for a search term. So Spider-Man, although popular, has less videos than Marvel, which has so many. That doesn't mean it's a bad search term. It's just one thing to consider when you decide on your final niche. Another method would be to find out your competitor's videos ranking. So, for example, I will pick this channel, go to videos, and sort by most popular videos. So, what I would do in this situation is I might look at some of his most popular videos and see, is this something I want to make a video on? Is this something that's related to my channel, on my niche? And is this something that I could make a video on, meaning that I wouldn't copy his video? I would literally watch his video for inspiration, see what he was basically saying, and then put it into my own words, if that's something I could basically teach. I'd like to introduce you to two browser extensions that, from my point of view, are a must for every YouTube creator. This will help you with everything, starting from titles, thumbnails, keywords, competitor analysis, daily ideas for your videos, and so much more. The first browser extension is vidIQ, and the second one is TubeBuddy. You can find the link for each of these in the video description, and also discount coupon codes. There are also free plans, and for more features, there are, of course, paid plans. They both have similar features, and I have used them both for my videos. But I choose to use vidIQ. Again, this is just my preference, and you can go over each of them, read the reviews, and compare them as you wish, and choose the one that suits you best. You will see in this course how important it is to have one of these tools. Another great tool to use is called Social Blade. Social Blade tracks user statistics and charts from multiple video sharing, social media, and gaming websites, such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. You can use Social Blade to track similar channels for video ideas and titles, with most creators adding unique touches to their videos. The idea is to find what's working for successful creators in your niche. Social Blade provides the latest, most viewed, highest rated, and most relevant videos of users. The tabs display video titles and performance data. Those insights are a goldmine to support content planning. For example, you can research other videos in your niche to see their best performing videos. Then you can use the data on Social Blade to plan your next videos. Suppose you want to create a self-challenge video about going vegan for a month. You can search for that query on YouTube to isolate similar videos. You can then drill down further on Social Blade for those videos and creators to get a holistic picture of what's achievable with that topic. Next tool is Exploding Topics at explodingtopics.com, which has a free and paid version. You can see what are the trends based on categories or you can even search the database. There is also a trial version for just $1, so you can explore the pro version as well. For me, this website did a very good job, so give it a try. YouTube offers a free way to find what works, and that is the auto-suggest feature. As you type into YouTube's search field, suggestions automatically appear. Those suggestions surface because of their popularity among YouTube users. For example, how to create a blog is a common search query and auto-suggested, whereas how to eat pig feet with chopsticks isn't. 
Here's a quick hack you can use. You can enter your keyword and then start with the alphabet, like pizza A, pizza B, or words in front, how, where, why, when, and so on. Upon generating search engine results, evaluate the view count of videos to determine user interest. Also, use filters such as upload date, type, duration, features, and sort by to support your planning further. For instance, filter to results for the past year to understand how videos performed for a given query. In this video, you will see channel ideas that are actually making money using the automation videos method. Keep in mind that YouTube ad revenue is not the only way to make money. You should also be working on affiliate marketing, potential brand deals, for example, and even potentially related information products. All of these are almost assuredly an easier way to make a lot more money. Chapter 5 entitled How to Make Money on YouTube Monetization from the Free YouTube Fundamentals course will teach you all of this. One great niche is related to documentaries, and we have two examples. Moonreel is doing it as, say, political commentary taken to the next level. There's also the Cold Fusion channel. Let's pick a video from Cold Fusion channel, why Meta dropped 70%, and click play. As you can see, the video is made out of clipped videos and images, and it has a voiceover. If we click on the show more button, we can see how he earns money from selling merch. He also has an affiliate link to a book for sale on Amazon and Google Play. You can also support him with the thanks button here on YouTube and so on. So that's one niche that you might be interested in doing, documentary style videos on just about anything you want. Another niche would be a top 10 or top five style video. An example would be most amazing top 10 channel. On the about tab, we can see this. Welcome to most amazing top 10, a YouTube channel that produces daily videos on topics surrounding mysterious, strange, scary, funny, interesting, educational, and mind blowing facts. This channel is seven years old and already has 7 million subscribers. So they can do top 10 videos about anything they want at this level. But if you are just starting out, you have to niche it down as much as possible. So you can do a top 10 best restaurants in Rome or top five best crime movies to watch on Netflix. But your next video should be about the same topic, like top 10 best vegan restaurants in Rome or top five best comedy series on Netflix. Another great channel is Nuke's Top 5. This channel talks about top five lists of scary things. Scary videos of ghosts caught on camera. If we take a look at their videos, you will see the same automation method. Cut clips with voiceover. Seems people are very interested in scary things, right? Moving on, we have the sports niche. And here we have the rebound channel with 2.88 million subscribers. This channel does videos about NBA and basketball and also some top 10 videos like this one. Eight items LeBron owns that costs more than your life. Let's watch this one for a bit and we will see the same automation method. So every country has its own sports league and if it's basketball, football, baseball, and so on, you can pick any of them and do videos about that. You can also find a lot of footage around this niche. So maybe you can consider it. See you in the next lesson. Another niche you can talk about is the trending one. For example, top trending channel. Because it's trending, so people already have a thirst for what it is. They are talking about channels that talk about trending topics exactly on the back of trends. So, for example, when Queen Elizabeth passed away, lots of people went searching online for Queen Elizabeth. The good thing about having a YouTube channel on this niche is you can make videos exactly when things happen. You can use Google Trends, as you saw in the previous lesson, to find what are the current trends. You can head also to YouTube's main page and click on Trending, and you can see what's trending based on your country. Money is always a good topic to talk about, and here we have the richest channel. They talk about different celebrities, which always brings a lot of attention, like Nike, Lionel Messi, 
Lil Wayne, and there's a lot of footage you can find and make your own video about. Money always gets good clicks when there's something like dollar sign and 100 billion. You're talking about someone's home or someone spends on yachts. You know, people are always interested in this topic. It's also quite good because it will probably fall into the finance niche when you're talking about money. And that's always good, as we spoke about a good CPM. Another good niche is news, because people always want to know what's happening around the world, right? Or at least in their country. For example, there's a lot of interest on news about the Russia-Ukraine war right now. So you can do news about the war zone, for example, to narrow it down. You can simply watch the news and create a video about that using footage from YouTube or other websites. You can also do the top 10 or top 5 news for the day in your specific country or abroad. People don't have much time, so they would be interested in watching what's going on quickly. You can do news about current events in UK, USA, Europe, or whatever country you are interested in. We'll talk about more niches in the next video. We will talk about the celebrity niche now, and here we have Inform Overload Channel, which uses the automation method for its videos. We can see here they use videos, images, and a voiceover for their videos. This video is about Johnny Depp and his supporters that started turning on him. What a great catchy title, right? Why is celebrity a good niche? Because people care about celebrities a lot. The good thing is that you will always have something to do a video about, a lot of footage on any celebrity, and so on. Now take a look at their titles and their thumbnails. You just want to click on each of them, right? You can make videos about celebrities, money, scandals, relationships, their homes, cars, wealth, and so on. Try to narrow the niche as much as possible. The next niche is about food. Everybody loves food. So, searching top food on YouTube brings this channel, Insider Food, with this amazing cheeseburger. This video is a list about 42 foods you need to eat in your lifetime, which has a great title as well. Here, you can see they grabbed other people's videos and compiled a list of best foods. They are giving credit to each place, which also brings a nice touch to the video. If you start such a channel, narrow it down for example, to best Swedish desserts or crazy foods to eat in Thailand and so on. Again, you will find plenty of content around this niche. Other great niches are technology channels like TechZone with all kinds of gadgets. Luxury videos like Mr. Luxury with the most expensive things around the world. Cars, travel, movies, I'll put a list in the description so you can watch the videos when you want to consider any of these niches. In order to create no-face videos for YouTube, you will need a script. Just like a movie director, right? A script is essential because it will take you less time to produce the video rather than just going blind. There are a few ways to do this, and I will cover them all. You can of course hire someone to do it for you, and I will talk about that later in the video. Or you can do it too. To see how long your video will come out to be, you can always use a word counter website that will take the number of words and give you an estimated time in minutes. You can do a Google search for words to minutes, and you can choose any website you wish. I will pick the first one here, and if I enter, for example, 500 words, I will get an estimate of 3.8 minutes of video length. I will talk about the ideal video length later in this course. Another tip for creating the successful script is to put yourself in the viewer's shoes. So once you write it and read it, try to see if there is any time when the viewer might actually leave the video for a different number of reasons. Because as you will see later in this course, viewer time is an important factor when it comes to both monetization, YouTube recommending your videos, and so on. Once the video is done, go over it and cut any moments that really didn't matter or makes the viewer click away. If you are doing tutorial videos, explain to the viewer at the beginning why they should use your method before you explain to them how to do it. For example, if you teach people how to make a lasagna, tell people why they should go with your recipe. You can easily say things like this is the fastest way, or this ingredient will give an amazing taste, and so on. You, you get the picture. 
When you are writing a script, think about telling a story. The story will break down into four pieces. The intro, rising action, climax, and fuzz used to hook the viewer into the video. You have about 15 seconds to hook the person into a viewer before he decides to either watch it or click off. You have to create a desire for people to continue watching the video. Let's say you will do a video about celebrities, and I would do a video on Jay-Z's mansion. The title would be Inside Jay-Z's $88 Million Mansion. At the beginning of the video, I'd say something like, Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Or, this is Jay-Z's billion-dollar mega mansion in Bel Air. This huge, expensive, 30,000-square-foot mansion is home to the biggest rapper on the planet. And there are things that you've never seen before. In today's video, I'm going to go through five of the craziest and most amazing things inside Jay-Z and Beyonce's mansion. Make sure to stay till the end because there's an absolute shocker about what's inside Jay-Z's home. So, the intro reaffirms the title and creates the desire for people to watch till the end. Next, ask people to subscribe and tell them why. You can say things like, don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on for more celebrity gossip or mansions or whatever your channel is about. In here, you can add a nice subscribe video element. Then once you go into the actual video to tell people about your story, and this is the rising action, you can tell people about Bel Air, for example, a few things about Jay-Z, when did he move in there, how big the pool is, or how many bedrooms it has, or if you were doing a top five, just talk about them each. During your video, you can also ask people to comment about what they think. For example, do you think this mansion is worth $88 million? Or, would you like to have a home theater in your living room? Or whatever, make people engage with your video in the comment section. For the climax, if you do tutorials, you can talk about the pros and cons of the method you described. Or if you were doing a tech video, for example, a phone review, you can talk about the pros and cons as well. In our Jay-Z Mansion example, you can tell about the shocking thing that you mentioned at the beginning. The last part is the falling action or the outro. This is where you ask people to watch your next video. It is very important for people to click and watch your next video that you recommend through end cards, which we will talk about later on. YouTube wants people to stay on the platform for as long as possible. So if they see that people watched your video and they are going to another video, they will promote your videos more. Try to keep the viewer to the same content he watched and don't recommend a totally different video. On my VR channel, I liked the idea of ending the video with a trailer from the next video. Let's check this. And we can see the example at the end. Last but not least, study your competition. You can enable captions on YouTube and see what they say, when they say it, and so on. In the next video, I will show you faster methods to create a script. Welcome back, guys. So let's see faster methods to generate scripts using artificial intelligence. The first method would be to copy and paraphrase an already existing script from another YouTube video. Since you will be changing it, the content will be different, so it's not just copy-paste. And let's see how you can do this. Let's take our previous example and head to YouTube and search for Jay-Z Mansion. Let's pick this video. You can either click these three dots, choose Show Transcript, and copy the text and paste it into a Word document, and then clean it. Or you can use a website to do it for you. By going to Google Search, type Download YouTube Subtitles, copy and paste the YouTube URL, and click Download. I will pick the .txt version, and there you go. Much cleaner, right? Then you can use a free paraphrasing tool like Quillbot, paste the text, and click Rephrase. The first 125 words are free, and you can also get a premium version for more. As you can see, it literally paraphrases the script, and you get a brand new version of it that you can use in your videos. Another way is to find good quality articles about the topic you want and paraphrase them in Quillbot. Let's say you want to create a video on the finance niche, and you want to talk about cryptocurrency. What you can do is simply search on Google for what is cryptocurrency, for example. Here is a great article and might be a great title for your video, Cryptocurrency Explained with Pros and Cons for Investment. 
in your video, you can talk at the start about what is cryptocurrency? And you can copy this paragraph. Then maybe types of currencies and are cryptocurrencies legal? Now you copy and paste the text into Quillbot and do the same thing. As you can see, you have different modes of paraphrasing, and you can also change synonyms mode in order to make the article more unique. It's a great tool, and you can use it should you choose this method. Another AI-powered way to write your scripts is ChatGPT on OpenAI.com. Give it a try, and you will see the power of this website, not only for your YouTube videos, but for so much more. Let's write types of cryptocurrencies, and this AI will generate your scripts for free. Or you can write our cryptocurrencies safe investments, and boom, there you go. It writes the script for you. This website is a game changer. You can, of course, hire someone to read the scripts for you and record it. Or you can use the following methods. Once the script is done, you need the voiceover. The first method would be for you to record your own voice. You just need a microphone, and depending on your budget, there are mics from $50 up to thousands of dollars. You can use a free software like Audacity or Shotcut. If you don't want your real voice to be heard in the video, you can easily alter your voice once recorded. Simply do a search on Google or YouTube for how to change voice, and you will find plenty of tutorials. The second method would be to use a text-to-speech website that will generate the voice based on your script. There are plenty of free ones, but from my point of view, the voices are really robotic. But let me show you an example. So if we do a search for text-to-speech, we will get this free website, TTS Reader. Here, we simply paste the text that we want to be read and click the play button. A cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency secured by cryptography, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. You can even select a few voices based on gender and location. Then click the record button and follow the instructions mentioned on the website in order to get the voice file. Another website that gives much better voices is murph.ai. Here you can sign up for free and use seven minutes for free, maybe for testing voices. But once you are here, you can see the difference from a robotic voice to a more natural one. Let's enter some text and test it out. A cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency secured by cryptography, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. You can choose again from many voices, either male or female, accent, age, and so on. Another website to consider which also adds emotions to the voice is Typecast. A cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency secured by cryptography which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. For my voiceovers, I use a lot of well-said labs. Here, you can test the voices as well. Choose a voice avatar based on your gender, age, narration, and so on. Give this one a try as well, should you choose to use this method. So now you have the script, the voiceover, and it's time to create the video, right? For that, you will need some footage, photos, music, or even sound effects depending on your niche. Let's cover each of them. Let's grab the Jay-Z Mansion video. And to do that, we will search on Google for Download YouTube Video. And I'll use the first site that comes. Here, we paste the link and I'll choose the 720p quality and click Download. Some pop-ups will come up, but you can close them. And here we can see the video downloaded. One important thing to watch out for is if the video has any watermarks on it. Although you can zoom into the video so that part is not seen, it's better to find ones that don't have them in the first place. You can use any website that has the ability to download YouTube videos. Then you can cut and use the footage based on the fair use policy as discussed earlier in this course. You can also buy footage from websites like Storyblocks, which costs something like 30 euros per month for unlimited downloads you can safely use any of the footage found here in your videos. Besides video footage, you also get access to music and sound effects, images, and so much more. Give it a try. It's really cheap and saves you a lot of time. You can of course use canva.com as well, or even Motion Array, to find footage and music for your videos. 
Another well-established website to find videos, music, and effects is Invato. And I use this website a lot for my web design business as well. Simply browse their different subsites and maybe you can find what you need. Websites like Pixabay and Pexels will give you free stock images that you can use in your videos. You can also download free music and sound effects from YouTube Audio Library. Here, you can select based on genre, mood, and much more. Simply click the play button to hear the music and download it if you want to use it in your video. YouTube will automatically add the license to your video description. A great way to improve your videos is by using lower thirds, effects, transitions, and more on your videos. Let's take this video on YouTube from The Richest Channel and play it for a few seconds. See that transition effect? Pretty cool, right? Here is one top 10 video I made when I first started. See those effects and titles? Also, the subscribe template? You can get all of these from the Envato website I talked about in the previous video. If you go to the Video Hive website, which is part of Envato, and type titles, you will get so many templates and you can edit them in either Adobe After Effects or Premiere Pro, DaVinci, and many more. You can also search for transitions, and here you can find so many of them, like 1,000 or 4,000, and you can use them in any of your future videos. Don't worry if you don't know how to use them, they all come with detailed instructions, and trust me, they are very easy to use. And hey, you'll be learning something new after all. Here, you can also find end card templates for your videos. Simply type YouTube and you will see all the elements that they have available for YouTube. The Pictory website is huge. It does all the work for you, meaning you simply enter the script and it automatically finds small videos and makes them into one single no face video. Let's see how it works. Let's go to Pictory.ai where you can sign up for free to test it. And there's also a paid version for more features. I will select script to video and paste the script, then click proceed. And from the template library, I will select a template to use in terms of captions. You can of course have those disabled as well, but for this example, I will pick one of them for you to see the end result. I will then choose the aspect ratio because yes, you can do shorts or reels types of videos as well. In a few seconds or minutes, depending on your script, you will have an auto-generated video based on our script. And boom, a full video auto-generated by AI. From here, you can change or remove the background music, add their own voiceover, and you can edit the text or other elements. You can do anything that you want. Once finished, click Generate, and there you go. Another AI website that does this is called Flicky, flicky.ai you can generate the audio only or the video with audio. This website works in the same way. You add the script and it auto-generates the voice and video. Test both of them for free and see if AI can help you with your automation YouTube business. See you in the next class. You can use websites like Fiverr, Upwork, or Freelancer. I used these websites for over a decade now and various purposes, including making YouTube videos, and I can say that Upwork has the best quality providers. Of course, you would want to verify people before sending them money and make sure to fully specify all your requests before selecting someone to do your project. You can post many projects, use escrow for payments on their websites, and so on. These websites are very easy to use and you just need to sign up for an account and post your project. Or on Fiverr, you simply search the job you want done and start a conversation with the person you found. Many of these people are already doing this type of work, so I am sure you can find a lot of people to do the job. As far as payment goes, take a look around at similar projects and see how much it takes for each of your needs. You can find people who can do it all for you from scripts to video, or you can hire different people to do the script, the voice, and then the video. Another website for voices is voices.com, where you can find so many talented voices to read your script. An important thing to note is to find examples of videos that you like in terms of effects or voice or anything else and show as many of them to the freelancer so they can understand how the video has to be done. Also, make sure to set the deadlines regarding when you want your work to be done 
and be as specific as possible about what you need. In this video, you will learn about click-through rate, watch time, and the ideal video length. I will cover more on analytics later on in the course, but here are the basics upon which you can decide the ideal video length. According to YouTube, your click-through rate is how often viewers watched a video after seeing its thumbnail. When YouTube shows your video, those are called impressions. Here's the click-through rate formula. Number of clicks divided by number of impressions times 100 equals CTR. So if 10 people clicked on a video, but 1,000 people saw the thumbnail overall, you'd have a click-through rate of 10%. You can see your CTR for each video in the YouTube Studio Analytics. What makes people click your video? The thumbnail and the title. Make no mistake, these are the most important factors to consider when creating a video. So don't spend 10 hours in creating the video and only 10 minutes to create the title or a thumbnail, because you can have the best video in the world. If people are not clicking on it to view it, and that goes vice versa, you can have the best title and thumbnail in the world if the video is not good enough for people to watch. Watch time measures how much time people viewed your video. So if you have a 10 minute length video and people watch it for at least seven minutes, then that is ideal for you since YouTube can place more ads in your video and they will make more money and they will recommend it to more people. So CTR and watch time are very important metrics for your channel when it comes to ad revenue. The ideal length of a video can be two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or even more. There's no such thing as ideal. You should be focusing on creating high value content so people can click and watch your video till the end. That is how YouTube measures data when it comes to monetization. Try not to make a video longer just for the sake of being longer and not provide valuable content that people actually enjoy watching. A two minute video, for example, that has an average view duration of a minute and a half will get suggested by the algorithm significantly more than a 10 minute video that has an average view duration of two minutes. And the reason being is because the first example retains viewers for a longer portion of the video and that tells YouTube that the audience enjoyed it more. And so it'll get suggested a lot more. The key thing to focus on is simply creating high quality videos that can maintain audience interest for as long as possible. In this last lesson on this chapter, I will add the checklist script on making a YouTube no face video. So do you have experience in a niche? Maybe you are a real estate agent or a chef or a computer programmer and you can do a channel and share your experience with other people. Add that to your checklist. Let's say I am a chef in London. The second question would be, what do you watch most on YouTube? And go to your YouTube history to get ideas, or even on TV, right? Lots of people are watching Netflix, HBO, Prime, and so on. Put the things you enjoy watching here. So I'm going to write cooking shows, chef's table, healthy lifestyle. Is there a pattern in these niches? Well, there is, in my example here, cooking. Healthy lifestyle means healthy food as well. So the pattern is food. Create your own idea based on your interests. I'm going to make a channel about these interests and I'd write something like cooking healthy food, healthy food recipes. Narrow down your niche. You have to narrow down as much as possible when you start your channel to find an audience interested in your niche. For this example, I'm not going to make a channel on cooking healthy food. Maybe I'm going to start a channel on cooking vegan healthy dinners. We all have dinner, right? Summarize the channel. To summarize the channel, I can write something like preparing cheap and easy vegan meals, top five vegan burgers, top 10 best breakfasts. Next, you will pick the channel style and it can be a top five, top 10 style like top five best vegan burgers in the world or top 10 best electric cars in UK. You get the idea. Or it can be a documentary slash info style, like inside Jay-Z's $88 million mansion, or 10 things you didn't know about the iPhone 14 Pro camera. And finally, the tutorials slash how to style, for example, how to make best cheesy burger, or how to install windows in five minutes, something like that. Great. Once you've decided on your niche and channel style, 
you will need to do research for your thumbnails and title. Let's say you pick the luxury niche and you want to make a video about the most expensive homes. So you will check your competitors and let's go on YouTube and search for most expensive house. Now you can see that these top ranked videos have a lot of subscribers, so they get a lot of views anyways to their videos. So it would be better to narrow down more to most expensive houses in London, for example, to find better results. Let's take a look at all these thumbnails and titles, and you can grab them and put them in your thumbnail structure page. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to press Windows plus Shift plus S. If you're on a Mac, hold Shift Command 4 and simply drag to copy the thumbnail and title. Okay, so I've copied four of them, but you can do a lot more research because, again, thumbnails and titles are the most important thing on YouTube. Once you did this, you are going to start looking for similarities between the thumbnails and titles. So for example, we can see money in big white text with shadow, bright color, and rich contrast. What else we have? The house inside or outside view, and so on. Same thing for titles. We have the word home, shocking words like the most expensive, numbers like the year, or the amount. Now for titles, you can always get help using AI tools like Quillbot. And you can copy and paste a title and have the AI paraphrase it for you. So I'll copy this title, Touring the Most Expensive House in the United States, and click Rephrase, and you will get some results. You can also use the ChatGPT website, which will give you better results if you type, Can you rewrite this title, Touring the Most Expensive House in the United States? And boom, five brand new titles. Next, we have the script writing checklist that you can follow when writing your video script. This was the last session on the YouTube automation course. If you haven't enrolled yet, check out the YouTube advanced course where you will learn how to grow your YouTube channel fast. Don't forget to check the community forums where you can ask your questions or seek advice for anything that is related to YouTube. I also have some amazing giveaways for you, so make sure to check that out as well. Have an amazing day. In this lesson, we will see which are the best tools that help you grow your channel. I'd like to introduce you to two browser extensions that, from my point of view, are a must for every YouTube creator. This will help you with everything, starting from titles, thumbnails, keywords, competitor analysis, daily ideas for your videos, and so much more. The first browser extension is vidIQ, and the second one is TubeBuddy. You can find the link for each of these in the video description, and also discount coupon codes. There are also free plans, and for more features, there are, of course, paid plans. They both have similar features, and I have used them both for my videos, but I choose to use vidIQ. Again, this is just my preference, and you can go over each of them, read the reviews, and compare them as you wish, and choose the one that suits you best. You will see in this course how important it is to have one of these tools. Another great tool to use is called Social Blade. Social Blade tracks user statistics and charts from multiple video sharing, social media, and gaming websites, such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. You can use Social Blade to track similar channels for video ideas and titles, with most creators adding unique touches to their videos. The idea is to find what's working for successful creators in your niche. Social Blade provides the latest, most viewed, highest rated, and most relevant videos of users. The tabs display video titles and performance data. Those insights are a goldmine to support content planning. For example, you can research other videos in your niche to see their best performing videos. Then you can use the data on Social Blade to plan your next videos. Suppose you want to create a self-challenge video about going vegan for a month. You can search for that query on YouTube to isolate similar videos. You can then drill down further on Social Blade for those videos and creators to get a holistic picture of what's achievable with that topic. Next tool is Exploding Topics at explodingtopics.com, which has a free and paid version. You can see what are the trends based on categories or you can even search the database. There is also a trial version for just 
so you can explore the pro version as well. For me, this website did a very good job, so give it a try. YouTube offers a free way to find what works, and that is the auto-suggest feature. As you type into YouTube's search field, suggestions automatically appear. Those suggestions surface because of their popularity among YouTube users. For example, how to create a blog is a common search query and auto-suggested, whereas how to eat pig feet with chopsticks isn't. Here's a quick hack you can use. You can enter your keyword and then start with the alphabet, like pizza A, pizza B, or words in front, how, where, why, when, and so on. Upon generating search engine results, evaluate the view count of videos to determine user interest. Also, use filters such as upload date, type, duration, features, and sort by to support your planning further. For instance, filter to results for the past year to understand how videos performed for a given query or topic. Last but not least, we have Google Trends. Let's start with a few examples. I'd like to do videos about gaming, cooking, movies, and let's see which are the trends. To find accurate results, be as specific as possible. And well, gaming is not very specific, right? Because there are thousands of games, and I can't make videos for all of them. I created a gaming channel, and I did this mistake, where I was playing a lot of games instead of being more specific. After I discovered this issue, I started playing only Spider-Man, which was just launched back then. I will enter here Spider-Man Remastered. Next, I like to cook vegan food, and I'm not going to enter just cooking as this term is too broad, so I will enter cooking vegan food. As for the movies, I enjoy watching the Marvel series. Now, depending where you are from, or where your channel will focus on getting subscribers, let's choose here for example, United States. Choose the time frame as you wish, and I will choose YouTube search because that's what I'm interested in getting results from. As you can see, Marvel is searched the most. So, you have an idea for your next video, and you have to come up with the best title. Make no mistake, the title and the thumbnail are what gets people to watch your video. Your title should be unique and eye-catching in a way to build expectations. So, for example, instead of a title like Vegan Omelet, which builds no expectations, you can use How to Make a Vegan Omelet in 5 Minutes. Let's search, for example, the word vegan. As you can see in the title of all videos, we can find the keyword vegan. You can have one or two keywords in your title, and make sure to put it as close to the start of your title as possible. Let's do another search for a game Hogwarts Legacy, and we can also use the auto-suggest feature to see what are people searching the most right now, and we can see that Hogwarts Legacy gameplay can be our next title. We can also use TubeBuddy or vidIQ extensions to get some better titles and how they rank. So let's say we want to do a video about a movie series, for example, The Flash from Netflix. I will go ahead and enter the words The Flash in the search box here, and using the vidIQ extension, we can see the overall score of our keywords. We can see that the volume is around 80, which means a lot of people are searching for this keyword but they also have a very high competition, which means that a lot of people are doing a lot of videos on these keywords. The idea is to have a high volume and a low competition. And if we scroll down here, we will see the top related opportunities. Anything in green, like the Flash Season 9 keyword, is much better than the Flash Movie keyword, which has a lower score. So that can be our title or the keywords that we use in our title. If we click the show all keywords button, we can see more of them and we can pick up the best ones based on the score. Another great way to get better titles is when we publish a video. The vidIQ extension has a feature called get AI title recommendations. If we click on that, we get so many great titles and we can also refresh them if we want to see more. 
to see how our title looks on YouTube search on desktop, tablet, and phone, we can enter the search term here and click Preview. This is also helpful to see how our description, and most importantly, how our thumbnails will look like on small devices. If you can add to your title numbers or dates, that would be really good. Let's search for best laptops, and you can see we have here 2022 top 10 and 2022 top 5 and so on. The ideal length would be about 60 to 70 characters because anything beyond 70 characters will have three dots instead. A few eye-catching words can be as follows. If we do a search for Photoshop skills, for example, you can see we have powerful, tips and tricks in caps, you need to know, most useful, amazing. These types of shocking words are very important. So probably the best title would start with the keyword or use the how to or a question, have a date or a number or even both, and an eye-catching word like new or mistake. Also make the title about the viewer. For example, is the new iPhone 14 worth buying rather than I love my iPhone 14, which is about your phone. Remember guys, your title must be something exciting in order to be clicked, and I'm sure you'll get the best out of it. Head to the community forum here and ask questions about your titles to get more opinions. The video description is basically telling people what the video is about, but it's also a great place to advertise your products, your affiliate links, and so much more. The first part of the description is very important because YouTube will use that to recommend your video. At the beginning of the video description, add your keywords as well, but don't just duplicate your title. If we take our previous title example, how to make a vegan omelet in five minutes, our video description can start with, this vegan omelet recipe is so quick and simple that you'll fall in love with it. As you can see, we used the same keywords as our title, but we expanded it and made it more interesting for the viewer to read. If we do a YouTube search, for example, best camera 2023, you will see that the description also has these keywords at the beginning. Try to make each video description unique and not just copy and paste it. The first 200 characters are above the show more fold on the description box. So if you want your call to action or link to be seen by most people, keep it within the first 200 characters. After these lines, you can have a little info about you, like with five years of professional culinary experience on my channel, you'll find cooking tips, tricks, reviews, and the latest kitchen gadgets. Every video you produce should have some kind of call to action. At the end of it, you might direct viewers to a website or a t-shirt you sell or an Amazon link to a product you just reviewed. At the very least, you should include links to your other social media platforms and an invitation to subscribe to your channel. If you mention any links to other YouTube videos or websites, the description is the place to put them. Including timestamps in your video description can make your video more user-friendly and help your content rank well on search engines. YouTube video timestamps appear within search results, improving user retention by directing users to the most relevant portion of videos from SERPs. Users can search for keywords that appear in your video's description and click on a thumbnail on the SERP to view the portion of your video that answers their search query. Let's look at one of my videos, I am Cyrus, here, which uses these timestamps. Now, these are great because it breaks the video into chapters. If you use hashtags in the description of your video, for example, meal prep, sun or cooking, your viewers can click on those links and they will be brought to a page of videos that share the same hashtag. Not only can you use this method to increase watch time on your own channel, but even if viewers watch someone else's video and stay on YouTube, you'll be rewarded for that effort by YouTube. Tags tell YouTube what your video is about and who it should suggest it to. So we talked about keywords in your title, in your description, and now we will add it as the first tag as well here. When you add tags, be precise and concise and tell YouTube exactly what your video is about. With the help of the vidIQ extension, we will automatically get suggested tags and also their score. 
If we click on Keyword Inspector, we can see more keywords. So we enter the main keyword here, and we get more keywords, as I mentioned. Simply clicking the plus button will add it to our list. Now, here on the main keywords window, we also get matching terms and also questions that people search on YouTube. We can also use the auto suggest feature on YouTube search to get more tags ideas. Don't go crazy with these tags and add 50 of them. Instead, you can add six, 10 maybe, if they are specific to your video. Think about how you search on YouTube, meaning you rarely search only one keyword, right? So maybe instead of the word omelet, you write how to prepare a vegan omelet, or top five best cameras, or best electric SUV. So these are your tags. You can also do a search on your competitors, and vidIQ offers you that. If we type best camera 2023 and pick any video, we can see the video tags and also the score for them. So that's a great way to get inspired. Thumbnails are probably the most important thing on YouTube because that will make people click on your video as thumbnails are the first to catch the viewer's attention. You can use Canva, Photoshop, and you can find plenty of free software or even phone apps to create your thumbnails. Here are some tips to create clickable thumbnails. One, add contrast to your images. People usually watch YouTube videos on their phones where the thumbnails are pretty small. So you've only got a few seconds to catch someone's eye on your video. On any editing software you use, you have brightness and contrast. Two, put text on your thumbnail, but don't put the same text that your title is. You're just telling the viewer the same thing again. Put a couple of words, not too many, and make it intriguing. You can make it big enough and maybe add a shadow or a border to the text to make it stand out. Three, always test your font sizes by seeing if you can read them on a mobile phone. Use sans serif fonts instead of serif fonts. You can get free fonts and test them out on Google free fonts. Four, consider using capital letters for your text as they are easier to read. Only use lowercase if you have a very small amount of text in your image or if it's just like one word or something like that. But make sure the size is large enough that it can be read. Five, use 3D and depth in text to attract attention to the front of your thumbnail. A little depth added can make it easier to read using shadows and border colors. Six, something you'll often see on YouTube thumbnail images is a split screen. If you use this strategy, Limit the amount of text and use different colors in the images on the split screen. Seven, use a consistent layout to your thumbnails, which can help your brand. So you have your font, colors, and you can use that on your thumbnail as well. Eight, if you're talking about TikTok or Facebook or Instagram, add the logo to your thumbnail. Nine, circles and arrows do help in some thumbnails, especially on top five type of videos or I can't believe this happened. People will get intrigued and click on it. If you use this, try using a few words or a simple background. 10. Use colors to create a contrast. So YouTube has a red and white color, so use green, blue, yellow colors. Remember, the color wheel can go from there. 11. You can also snap a picture from your video and use it like that, or adjust it in an image editing software to make sure it is high quality. 12. Use faces and expressions whenever you can. We are naturally drawn to human faces, so if you can include yourself in the thumbnail, it would be great. Otherwise, you can use stock images from websites like pexels.com, pixabay.com, or images from Google Images as well. 13. Another tip is to check the suggested video's thumbnails because you can see here the similarity between them. Cards are designed to complement videos and enhance the viewer experience with relevant info. I'm sure you've seen them on YouTube videos when something pops out and says, watch this. In your video, you might have a moment where you say, for example, remember that video where that happened? Or if you want more information, I have a video about that. And there you put the card. On desktop, that video might pop out on a new window, which is great. But on a mobile device, it will go to that video which is not that great because on YouTube, it's all about watch times over views. 
So if you go to your analytics in YouTube Studio and see that people might be dropping off your video after some time, let's say two minutes, you might want to add a card there to keep the viewer on your channel. You want to put a video in that card that is watched the most and has the best click-through rate to keep viewers on your channel. We will see in the analytics video which cards are clicked the most, and we can see which ones work the best. With end screens, we can suggest other videos from our channel to the viewer. You want to keep the viewer on your channel for as long as possible, right? With end screens, you can do that. You can suggest other videos or a channel, a website link, and even just subscribe to your channel. There are different layouts where you can put, for example, one video here and a subscribe button here, or two videos and one subscribe. You get to choose the layout. You can design a background and put it at the end of your video for the last 5 to 20 seconds. Or you can also do a trailer for the next video like I did here on my channel and simply point to that video. From my point of view, a trailer is much better than an image because we are looking for trailers mostly when we search for a movie, right? You can find a lot of templates for the end screen, and I will put some of them in the video description. So in essence, use cards and end screens to show off your best videos. I am going to recommend to you in this video a few websites from where you can get really amazing effects to enhance your videos, video music, and more. You can find the links for these websites in the description. So the first one that I've been using for years now in my work is VideoHive. And you can get so many video effects that it will help make your videos more amazing. Here we have plugins for After Effects, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and more. You can always enhance your videos using titles or lower thirds or even transitions. Here you can also find YouTube end card templates to use in your videos. On the same platform, you can find YouTube graphic elements such as covers, thumbnails, and much more. Should you need audio effects or music, they have that as well. Another great website where you can find video stocks, audio, and images is Storyblocks at storyblocks.com, which offers a subscription for their content. Canva is, of course, another great website where you can create your thumbnails, add music, or some effects to your videos. Other websites worth mentioning are Pexels, Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, and Freepik. One of the greatest tools that YouTube gives its creators are the analytics for your channel. Everything from views, watch time, audience retention, revenue reports, all tell you exactly how each video you posted is performing on your channel. Let's head over to YouTube Studio and then click the analytics link. The first screen will give us the overview, content, audience, and research tabs. On the right side, we can see the time frame, and by default, YouTube shows us the last 28 days, and we can easily adjust that. We have a graph showing us the views, watch time, and subscribers for the last 28 days. Below, we will see the top videos on the channel. The content tab will show us more details about how the channel is performing, and we can see the views from shorts. Where did subscribers come from? Here we can see how viewers found the channel, typical views, video impressions, and how they led to watch time. We can also see the remixed content from shorts, which means people used one of my shorts and created their content on their channel. We can see analytics for each of the video types, such as videos, shorts, live, and community posts. We will talk about these in the next video for video analytics. The Audience tab in YouTube Analytics gives you an overview of who's watching your YouTube videos and insights on their demographics. Here, we can see the returning viewers. These are the viewers who already watched your content and came back for more. And new viewers, which are viewers who saw the videos for the first time. You can use the returning and new viewer metrics to plan content strategies for your channel. For example, you can build loyalty by creating consistent content, or you can experiment with new topics to attract new viewers. As YouTube explains, if you have mostly returning viewers, that means viewers are frequently returning to watch more. To reach more new viewers, 
some creators experiment with new topics or formats. If there are mostly new viewers, it means viewers might not be returning to watch more after discovering your channel, and you should consider creating a series or videos about similar topics. The When Your Viewers Are On YouTube report shows you when your viewers are online across YouTube in the last 28 days. You can use it to help build your community, understand when to schedule a premiere, or to plan your next live stream. Subscriber bell notifications show you how many of your subscribers chose to receive all notifications from your channel and how many can actually receive those notifications based on their YouTube and device settings. Watch time from subscribers. This report tells you what percentage of your watch time comes from subscribers and viewers who aren't subscribed. The age and gender column shows you which age ranges are adding most to your watch time and the gender distribution of your audience. Channels your audience watches shows you what other channels your viewers consistently watched outside your channel over the past 28 days. You can use it to find out what channels your viewers are interested in and for collaboration opportunities. Content your audience watches shows you what other videos your viewers watched outside your channel over the past seven days. You can use it to find topics for new videos and titles. You can also use the info for thumbnail ideas and collaboration opportunities. Top Geographies shows you from which country people are viewing your videos, and top subtitle slash CC languages shows your channel's audience by subtitled language. On the Research tab, you can explore what viewers are searching for on YouTube, and this is very important in creating new content. The Searches Across YouTube tab shows the top related searches for a search term over the last 28 days. Viewers across YouTube not just your audience, make these searches. We can filter by language and country, and also very important, by content gap. A content gap happens when viewers can't find enough quality search results on YouTube for a specific search. You can use content gaps as inspiration to create content that doesn't exist or could be improved. On the other hand, your viewers' searches show the top searches that your audience and viewers of similar channels have searched over the last 28 days. Next to each search term, there's a search volume rank that describes how popular the term is, low, medium, or high. Saved lets you view your saved search terms. In the next video, we will talk about the advanced mode in analytics. Clicking the advanced mode on the analytics tab will reveal us more important information. Here we have many filters to choose from, like content type, device, geography, and so on. We can also choose the range for the report and also compare by period or by video or groups. The content tab shows all the video metrics such as views, watch time, subscribers, revenue, impressions, and click-through rate. Here we can also add metrics to the table and also compare metrics. Traffic source shows you how your viewers found your content within YouTube and external sources. Here we have YouTube search, and if we click on it, we will see what terms viewers searched when they found your content. We can see traffic coming from shorts, browse features, external websites, which shows you the specific external websites and apps where viewers found your content. Suggested videos shows you which videos viewers watched from suggestions. We also have end screens, playlists, and video cards, which is helpful to know. Geography shows you from which country people are viewing your videos, and clicking on each country will also reveal its cities. Next, we have age and gender that we've seen previously in the channel analytics lesson. Again, guys, these analytics will all help skyrocket your channel if used properly. Let's move on into video analytics. To access any video analytics, simply go to content, pick a video, and click the analytics icon. On the Overview tab, we will see the video views, watch time, and how many subscribers did this particular video bring to the channel. We can also select the time frame from the right side, and you might want to select the last 28 days to get a better range of the data. We can also see the traffic sources, and clicking the See More link will bring us the advanced mode that we discussed in the previous video. Now, 
the most important part for a video is the key moments for audience retention. So this video length is 1 minute and 41 seconds. Here we can see that the average view duration is 59 seconds, which is very good. We can also see on the chart that people are watching after the 30 second mark, and then easily it starts to decline. If we click on the spikes button, we will see the video spikes. Spikes appear when more viewers are watching, rewatching, or sharing moments of your video. Dips mean viewers are abandoning or skipping certain parts of your video. If you see a big drop down, it means people are not interested in the video, and you can add some cards to another video on that time mark so that viewers are still watching other videos. On the Reach tab, we can see the video impressions and click-through rate. Impressions are the people that saw your video thumbnail and title and decided whether to click on it or not. The impressions click-through rate shows how many people clicked on the video to watch it. The higher the CTR, the better. But this can change, of course, over time. So if you have a good retention rate, but you get low CTR on your video, it usually means that the video thumbnail and or title might not be that good. On the other hand, if you have a good CTR and a low retention rate, it means that the video itself might not be that appealing to people. On this tab, we can also see how viewers found this video, the external websites that led to this video, other content suggesting this video, YouTube search terms, and bell notifications that we talked about in our previous video. The Engagement tab will show us how engaging the video is, and we have here the total watch time and the average view duration, audience retention, likes and dislikes, the effectiveness of your video's end screen. This shows how often viewers clicked on an end screen element after seeing it. Audience tab will show us the watch time from subscribers, age and gender, and the countries people watched from. So guys, besides the usual great titles, description, thumbnails, tags, playlists, let's see what other methods there are to gain more subscribers and views to your YouTube channel. A great way to get more subscribers and more views is to promote your content on other social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, Reddit, Discord, and so on. When I started my VR channel, the most traffic came from Reddit, for example, in my niche because there are so many subs on Reddit for this niche. So depending on your niche, you may want to go to reddit.com, create an account, and start browsing subs about your niche. Join and start posting the YouTube links there. You can also create a page of your own and post the videos there. Remember, social media indexes in Google almost instantly so your videos might be discovered instantly on Google search as well. When you create the title for your thread, make sure to use good keywords that will get indexed and people will search for. Another good example is, of course, Facebook and Twitter. You might not want to post the link to your YouTube video on your post because no platform likes their users out of it. So instead, you can create a 30 second or one minute video from your current video. For example, I was cutting the beginning of the video, Upload that to your post and put a link to the YouTube video in the description or on your first comment on Facebook. That way people that are interested will click on it and view the full video and you also get discovered on the social media platform. You can, of course, post to Facebook groups, put the link on your own personal page, and so on. But don't be spammy because you will get banned so fast. Just keep it natural. On Instagram, you can add your YouTube link on your bio and also on stories while posting short videos or photos. Commenting is a great way to bring more subscribers and views to your channel. By commenting on other people's videos related to your channel, people tend to click on your name and they are brought to your channel. From there, they can see that you are doing videos to their interest and they might watch and even subscribe to your channel. So simply go ahead, find related channels to your niche subscribe to them and turn notifications on and add a comment to their videos. But again, don't get spammy on that and make natural comments related to the video. Also, respond to the comments on your videos that other people add and engage with them. You might want to add your first comment to your video, pin it and heart it so others might reply to that and start engaging with your video. 
create short videos and post them on your YouTube Shorts, TikTok, and Instagram Reels. Once you reach 500 subscribers, you will get access to the Community tab on your channel. Here you can post updates, let people know when you upload a new video, and start engaging again with your community. So simply add the video thumbnail, your video title, and the link. You can also do paid posts to get more traffic to your channel by paying other people to post on their community tab. You want to find channels related to your content with at least 1 million subscribers. Go to their community tab and see if they have a great engagement on their posts. Then simply find their contact info, send them an email, and ask them if they can sponsor a post on their community tab. The same way goes on Instagram. You would find people in your niche and ask them about either a post or a story posting. You can also find forums, Q&A websites like Quora.com, where you can post your links, or even create a profile and add your channel link there. On forums, you can also buy signatures with a link to your channel or video that people will click on. Consider also starting a blog, either a free one on Medium or Blogger, and start adding some content maybe your own YouTube video script, and put the video link there as well. Or get a cheap hosting with WordPress and start your own blog. Blogs are indexed fast in Google, and from there, there's a small step to your YouTube channel. Create a LinkedIn profile and page and start adding posts with your video links there as well, and even a Pinterest profile. Another great thing I did for my VR community were giveaways where I am also doing on the Be Seen Academy. Giveaways are a great way to bring people to see your content and, of course, give back to the community. You can run giveaways on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and use websites like Gleam.io where you can create a giveaway to make people do several actions to join the giveaway. This was the last lesson on the YouTube Advanced course. If you haven't enrolled yet, check out the YouTube Automation where you will learn how to turn YouTube into a full-time income without ever showing your face or recording a video yourself. Don't forget to check the community forums, where you can ask your questions or seek advice for anything that is related to YouTube. I also have some amazing giveaways for you, so make sure to check that out as well. Have an amazing day. In this lesson, we will talk about equipment recommendations and if equipment really matters. So I truly believe that the content of your video is more important than the quality of your video camera or settings. Simply focus on creating great content and it's telling a story and sharing your life with the audience. Audio might be more important than the video quality as well. Because on YouTube, a lot of people are watching the videos from a small device like a mobile phone or tablet, or some simply let it run in the background. New microphones, cameras, and light models are coming up every year. So by the time you watch this video, there will be probably better models. Also, depending where you live, some models might not be available. And of course, it also depends on the budget you have. I, for example, bought the new Arc Lights, a lavalier mic from Boya, and I'm recording these videos with iPhone 14 Max Pro. You could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment. But at some point, spending more money isn't going to increase the quality of the video camera itself. And it's definitely not going to increase the quality of your YouTube video. Like I say, you can create a great YouTube video with what's in your pocket, your smartphone. So you will have to choose the best microphone, lights, camera, based on what type of videos you decide to make, indoors or outdoors, the room size you might be filming in, and so on. A lot of people, and I as well, are using what is called the three-point lighting for their indoor setup, and I will put links to that as well. In this video description, you will find a few YouTube videos to watch, from people that I consider being the best reviewers of such equipment. But at the end of the day, do your own research on YouTube by simply searching best YouTube cameras, best YouTube lights, or best microphone for YouTube. You get the idea. That way, you will get accurate product reviews that are up to date, and not just simply my opinion, since I've bought what works best for my case scenario here. You can also ask questions about this on our forum. See you in the next class. 
I've been using the Adobe package for my work, so if you want a professional editor, you might go with Adobe Premiere Pro, which is part of the Adobe package. Premiere Pro is a standalone software and at this time is priced at $21 per month. Or you can get the whole Adobe package, which I recommend, for $55 per month because it also includes Photoshop, which is best for graphics, and also 20 plus other software. Now, it's not going to be super easy to learn it, but you will definitely have fun with it since there are thousands of tutorials on how to do stuff. And hey, you'll be learning a new skill at the end of the day, right? There's also a light version of Adobe Premiere, which is called Adobe Rush, and it works on mobile as well. But of course, there are limited things you can do with it. For Mac users, there's Final Cut Pro, priced at $300. But there's also iMovie, which is free. Another great video editor for low budgets is Filmora, which comes at $50 per year and has great editing options, plenty of effects and plugins. Here are a few more video editors that are worth mentioning. DaVinci Resolve, Lumen 5, Shortcut, Ease US, Lightworks, OpenShot, HitFilm Express, and Canva. For screen recordings or live streaming, we have OBS. That's free and works on Windows, Mac, and also Linux. A lot of YouTubers use this for live streaming, but also to record their screen, for example, if you are making tutorial videos. There's also Camtasia, ScreenPal, and more but I'd honestly stick to OBS, which has all the features you need. See you in the next class. I'd recommend to get a piece of paper and write down the following things. What YouTube videos do you watch? Look at your subscription feed and your video history and figure out which types of videos you personally watch the most. So for me, it's cooking tutorials as I just started cooking vegan and vegetarian food. I also like to listen to meditation videos and so on. Next is what do you want to watch? What is the content on YouTube that you're just not getting enough of? What is the channel that you wish was out there? Or what is the kind of content that you're just tired of seeing? I like watching tutorials on YouTube, for example, but I'm tired of people just making the videos too long just for the sake of it. And yes, sometimes the video length will matter for YouTube. But guys, don't just do them lengthy and say the same thing over and over again. Write down what you would like to see on YouTube. Next, what are your hobbies? Hobbies are the most obvious starting point for YouTube content ideas. If you have something you're truly passionate about, you'll find an audience on YouTube, whether it's sports, movies, technology, cooking, gaming, anything at all. Next, what's your expertise, right? What do you do for a living that you could teach others about? I started this academy based on this question, and it's pretty obvious. Write the answer on your paper. The next question would be, how would you differentiate yourself from what people are already doing? There are literally thousands of videos about almost anything, but since we are all different and have different opinions about things, I'm sure you will create amazing videos based on your views. Write it down, of course. A few common categories of videos on YouTube that can help you get started are commentary videos, whether it's news, gossip, or current events. There are also educational videos, such as science, math, cooking, DIY, or history. We have product reviews of technology, cars, different services, there's, of course, gaming channels and travel channels, lifestyle channels like exercise, dieting, and parenting, motivational speaking. And there's entertainment style channels, whether it's comedy or short films or music videos. Don't start a YouTube channel just because you saw someone else get famous doing it. If you don't make videos about things that you truly enjoy, you will never have the stamina to make it over the initial hump of building your audience. When you start making videos, you'll be lucky to get two, maybe three views per video. Maybe five or ten if your friends and family are extra nice. That can be extremely discouraging. 
and unless you're doing something that you would normally do in your free time anyways, you're going to get burnt out quickly. An important factor to consider is deciding on the niche of your channel. One niche can work for one person and may not work for the other. Views on YouTube will pay your bill at the end of the day, but that's not everything because one video can get a lot of views and others might not. So let's take, for example, one of my channels that I did in the past with this car video. So it got 100,000 views in just two weeks. And I was like, wow. But at some point it stopped. Why? Well, the title was great and the thumbnail as well. And it was posted at the right time of the topic. But the problem was that my next video was about a gaming laptop. So people watching the next video were very confused because they came to this channel for car videos. So YouTube stopped recommending that video. A more important factor to consider is the watch time, which YouTube cares about the most, and we will talk about more in the later chapters. A successful video will keep the viewers watching till the end, and also encourage them to watch the next video they present. Engagement is also another important factor, and that comes in the forms of likes, subscribes, shares, and comments. If you can get a discussion going in the comment section of your video, then you know you've created something of value. Let's narrow down the categories that work best. So we have finance, educational videos, product review videos, self-improvement videos, gaming, top 10 style videos. These are just a few examples, but keep in mind to create videos that people will engage with. Affiliate marketing is a process where you earn a commission by promoting a product or service made by another retailer or advertiser using an affiliate link. You will get paid for providing a specific result to a retailer or advertiser. Typically, the result is a sale, but some affiliate marketing programs can reward you for leads, free trial users, clicks to a website, or getting downloads for an app. Most affiliate programs are usually free to join, so you don't have to worry about high startup costs. So let's take, for example, Amazon. You simply sign up for free and start promoting products. You get the affiliate links and put them in your video description or in the comments area where you can also pin the comment. You can do the same for a lot of websites and promote their products or services in your videos. To find these websites, simply Google best affiliate marketing sites. I will also put a few links in the description of this video. I'm sure you might already know how to do this, but let's go really quick through this and see how to start a YouTube channel. So we will start by creating a new Gmail account, or if you already have one, bear with me for a few seconds, okay? Once your Gmail account is set up, go to youtube.com and click on your avatar and click create a channel. Enter the channel name that you wish, also a handle or username, and you can also upload an avatar for your channel and click Create Channel. Please note that you can change these settings anytime you wish. So that's how easy it is to create a channel. So once we have our channel created, click Customize Channel, click Branding. Here you can change your logo, and here you can change your banner image. As you see, YouTube tells us the best resolutions for our image. So this is where our banner image will show. You can use any program to make this, Photoshop, Canva, PicMaker, and so on. I've included a YouTube banner template for your reference to download. As you can see here, you have the safe area for desktop, mobile, tablet, and TV. This is how your banner will look on all those devices. I use Photoshop by default as my graphics editing software, but let's use a free one like Canva for this example. Or you can Google yourself YouTube banner image and get more free websites where you can design this. So here on Canva, we have a lot of free examples and we will use one just for the demo. Once we downloaded the image, let's go back on our channel and click upload. Here you will see also how our banner will be shown on different devices. When you are happy with the result, click Done. Here we can also choose to add a watermark to our videos. 
The watermark will appear in your videos in the right-hand corner of the video player. The only thing to do now is to click the Publish button over here. See you in the next class! Basically, your description is text that describes your channel and helps search engines find your YouTube channel. It is important to include keywords about what your channel topics are. So, if you teach about cooking, you'll want that included in your channel description. Because if someone's searching for that on YouTube, your channel can show up. Because not only do videos show up in the results, but also channels, you want your most important information up at the top of your description. The first 125 characters will show on YouTube search and on your main page. In your description, you can add what your channel is about. You can add your posting schedule or why people should subscribe to your channel. Be precise in what you are telling people there. For example, subscribe now for the latest budget travel locations. You can also do your research to your competition to get some inspiration about what you can include in your description. Next, we have the channel URL, which you can change it once you have at least 100 subscribers and is more than 30 days old. Here, you can add links to your social media, website, affiliate links, subscribe button, or anything else that you want to show up on your channel banner. Let's add these links and they will appear here. For a subscribe button, you can write something like I did on my I am Cyrus channel. I will type click here to subscribe and I will copy the channel link and I will add this to the URL. When people click the link, it will ask them if they want to subscribe, which is faster than going back from your channel to click subscribe. You can add links to Instagram, Twitter, or whatever website you want. Last, we can enter an email address, any email address, and not the one we use to create our Gmail account. For example, you might have a business email so people can contact you for collaborations or for other reasons that you might want for people to get in touch with you. After all that is done, click the Publish button, and there you go, we have our own channel customization done. This is how people will see your channel. We will go here to the Layout tab. If I scroll down on my channel, you can see that I have different playlists and different types of videos that I have laid out to create this sort of easily easy to see and easy to find layout. Here you can add a channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed. And here a video for returning subscribers which will show up here. What should your channel trailer do? It should give your audience a preview of what your channel is about and encourage them to subscribe. Make sure you keep it short and also assume that they've never heard of you. You can give a little explanation on who you are or what the channel is all about. Now, in my channel that I just created, I don't have videos to play around with, but all you really have to do is click Add a Section. All right, click Plus Channel Trailer, and then just choose one of your videos and click Save. And now anyone who comes to the channel who is new to it will see this video. Having a channel trailer increases the subscriber count for channels, so it's really important to create that. That would definitely be one of the first videos I focus on creating, even if it's just something short and straight to the point. 30 seconds, 60 seconds. I wouldn't even want it to be any more than 60 seconds, actually, just like a commercial on TV. So each of these are sections that you add. You choose the content, so you can choose a single playlist. You can choose your popular visit uploads, for example. You can choose all the videos you've posted. You can even add other channels' videos if you want. We will talk now about channel settings. The first thing to do is to set up your channel for monetization. In the General tab, you want to enter the currency you want to get paid in, usually your country currency or the currency of your bank account. Next in Channel, we will add the country of residence. We can enter the channel keywords, so when people search on YouTube for something, your channel might show up in the search results next to the videos. We will talk about how important keywords are in the YouTube Advanced course. In the Advanced Settings tab, we can preset if our videos are made for kids, so we don't have to select this every time, or if you have some videos that are made for kids, simply select I want to review this setting for every video. From the Advertisements section, you can disable interest-based ads, since your channel is not monetized yet, so people will only see the videos and no ads. 
Remember, we said this is a great way to gain subscribers until you are monetized. Moving on to the upload default, you might want to skip these or not depending on your videos. When you upload a video, YouTube will ask you about the title, description, and more for every video. Any words you enter here will show up by default in your upload video window. If, for example, you want to add something like a link to your website, you can put it here so you don't have to type it all the time in every video. Or, if you have a keyword that you want to add to all the videos, you can again enter it here. Let me show you how this works really fast. So, I enter a few words here, click Save, and then Upload a Video. You can see that everything I typed in the Upload Default section will show up here. I can of course edit or delete the text anytime. The same goes for the Advanced Settings. These are settings that YouTube will ask you every time you upload a video. Here, you allow automatic chapters, and we will talk about them later on. Set up how the comments should work on your videos, and how many viewers liked your video. In the Permissions tab, you can invite someone to have access to your channel and give them the according permissions. Simply click Invite, add their email, and select the permissions you want to give. You can click the Learn More button if you want more specific information about these permissions. In the Community section, you can add moderators. A moderator is someone you can allow access to your channel to go through and delete comments. A lot of people do it if they're going live and allow a moderator to delete the chat or different comments whilst they're busy creating and doing the live content. If, for example, you have a blocked words list or links for your comments here, you can approve users that might post links or specific words to your comments. In hidden users, you can ban users from your channel for whatever reason you want to. We have here live redirects. So basically what this is, is when you create a live stream, at the end of it, you can redirect users to another channel live stream and vice versa. Once your live stream ends, autoplay will move your viewers to the premiere or live stream of your choice. Click the Learn More button here to see exactly how this works on YouTube. Here, you can block comments from people that are posting these specific words, and of course, you can block links. See you in the next class. Here, you will see all of your videos listed once you start publishing them. The visibility setting allows you to set who can see and share your video. And from here, you can change it to private, unlisted, or public. On the restrictions column, you can see any restrictions that impact your video. The date when the video was published will show up here. Then we have the number of views and comments for a specific video. And of course, how many likes or dislikes we have. If we hover on any of our videos, you will see some more options like details and clicking this will take you to the edit page of the video where you can edit all the video options. Next, we have the analytics button, which will take you to the analytics page to see how your video is performing. And I will talk more about this later on. We have the comments button, which will take you to the comments page to see the video comments. If there are any view on YouTube will open a new window so you can see the video itself on YouTube. If you click these three dots, you will get another menu from which you can edit the video title and description only. Get the video link so we can share it. The Promote button will open the Google Ads website where you can promote your video using Google Ads. Download will obviously download a copy of your video and Delete Forever will delete the video. Most of these options are self-explanatory, but I wanted to go over them really quick. Now, if you can, also select one or more videos and guess what? Another menu will show. Let's select two videos for this example and see what we have here. We can batch edit multiple videos and change the settings that we have seen before for your videos. You can also add videos to a playlist. So we can create a new playlist here, add title, and choose the visibility of the playlist. Playlists are great to organize your videos, for example, on the channel page. They're also good for ranking on YouTube, and we will talk about this more in the YouTube Advanced course. The Live tab here will show all of your live stream videos. Posts will show your community posts, 
pretty much like a Facebook timeline if you want, and playlists will show all your account playlists. That was pretty much it, and I'll see you in the next class. On YouTube Studio, we also have the comments section. Here we have published comments and the held for review ones. The held for review are usually spam comments or the ones that triggered the words or links you set up earlier in the channel settings page. Now, comments are very important because it shows YouTube in their algorithm that people are commenting and interacting with your content, which they want. They want people on your page commenting. Make sure to reply to people, add hearts or likes to their comments. Just, you know, socialize with your audience. If you click here on the three dots menu, you can remove, report, ban user, and so on. On the other hand, you can also approve a comment held for moderation because it might not always be spam, so make sure to have an eye on that as well. Next, we have the subtitles page, and these guys are very important for your audience because some people might watch your video with low volume, or maybe at night they just scroll down and have muted the volume. So there are many use cases, right? Like think of Netflix, for example. You like to watch a movie in your own language, so they offer you subtitles. Same goes for YouTube. Now YouTube, for the English language, if you recorded it in English, will automatically put subtitles in English for you. But you can, of course, edit subtitles, add your own ones, and so on. On the copyright section, you will see if other people have taken your content and they put it on their channel. It'll flag up and they will come here. The audio library is one of the greatest things that YouTube has for us. It's free music and sound effects that we can use for our videos. Some of them you have, there's restrictions. Like you might have to attribute the author by putting a little thing in your description, saying who this music is by. Here we have three tabs, music, sound effects, and starred where you can see your favorite music or sound effects. You can search and filter by genre, by mood, instrument duration, also by attribution. So if you want to have songs that you can basically use for anything and not need to give attribution to the musician, you can choose attribution not required. I can filter that and then you can just play these like this. And if you're happy, you can click download and it's going to download to your computer and you can use that in your videos. So pretty self-explanatory. YouTube adds music and sound effects pretty often, so you might want to check it out when you need new music or sound effects. The Earn page will show you exactly how you can make money on YouTube as we discussed in our previous classes. You can also see the requirements and when you accomplish them, I'd also click this email me button to get the email from YouTube when I've reached the requirements for monetization. And here you can complete the basics like turning on two-step verification so that your account is in safe hands. Again, make sure to check the monetization policies before you start making videos for the niche you've chosen. Let's see how we can upload a video and see what settings we have. Click on the Create button here and choose Upload Videos. You can drag and drop your file here or click the Select Files button to choose the video from your computer. While the video is uploading, we can enter the settings that are needed for our video. Since this is a beginner course, I will go into a lot more detail about each of these settings and how to create perfect thumbnails, what extensions to use to find keywords, how to rank your videos better, and so many other tips and tricks in the YouTube Advanced course. Here you will enter the title of your video. Next we have the video description where we can enter what this video is about. We can upload a thumbnail or choose one that YouTube recommends from our video. If you click Upload Thumbnail, you have to verify your phone number first, and then you can easily add your own thumbnail to the video. You can also add the video to a playlist, which is, again, a very important factor for getting your videos discovered faster on YouTube. Next, we will choose if the video is made for kids, and we can also restrict or allow viewers under 18 years old. Chapters are also very important for video rankings, and we will see that in our YouTube Advanced class. Tags are keywords, and this is one way how people will find your video on YouTube search, and we can add up to 500 characters. Next, we can select the video language, choose a recording date, or place, which is again a good ranking factor, as people can search for videos by location. 
you can allow people to create shorts based on your video. And you might want to let this one on because it will bring more audience to your channel if someone uses part of your video in their shorts. You can choose the category where your video fits and of course, choose if comments are allowed or if you want to hold them for review or of course, you can disable them. On the video elements tab, you can add your own subtitles as mentioned earlier. You can type them manually while you play the video or if the video is in English, they will be auto added and you can modify them later in the subtitles page. End screen is very important, and this is basically once someone watched your video all the way to the end, you can then show him to watch another video from your channel, or you can put the subscribe button and a link to a website, or even show them a playlist. Next, we can add cards to the video, and they will sometimes show up around the top corner. Something pops up that says, hey, watch this here. Someone can click that and then go to the other video. You can again add a video, a playlist, another channel, and even a link. You can drag here and put your next video where you want it. Going to the next window, we have checks, where YouTube checks the video for copyright issues. And moving on to the visibility tab here, we can choose either to publish our video now, make it private just for us to see, or unlisted. We can also choose to schedule the video for a later date to be published. To create a live stream, simply go to Create and choose the Go Live button and make sure you click the Request button so this option will be enabled for your channel. With this, I wrap up the YouTube Fundamentals course. Should you have any questions, check out the forum. Or if you have any suggestions for improvement or things like that for this class, let me know. If you want to learn how to turn your YouTube into a full-time income without ever showing your face or recording a video yourself, check out the YouTube automation course. Have an amazing day, guys.